like, share, and subscribe here on Oncology Tube to get notifications when similar videos are available. Our study was focused on determining whether there were racial or ethnic disparities in patient outcomes in the responder trial. As a reminder, the responder trial is what established the clinical utility of the 21 gene recurrence core in participants with hormone positive HER2 negative breast cancer and 1 to 3 positive lymph nodes. Our study objectives were to evaluate the entire cohort for clinical and pathologic characteristics by race, analyze the clinical outcomes by race, and determine whether race is predictive of treatment benefit in early hormone positive breast cancer. The study included 4,048 women from the responder trial with known race and ethnicity. In regards to clinical characteristics, there were no significant differences in tumor size, lymph node involvement, or the 21 gene recurrence scores by race. However, there were more high-grade tumors among the non-Hispanic Blacks compared to non-Hispanic Whites and Asians. In regards to outcomes, the non-Hispanic Black cohort had an inferior five-year invasive disease-free survival of 87.2% compared to 91.5% in the non-Hispanic White cohort. On the other hand, Asian patients had a superior invasive disease-free survival compared to non-Hispanic Whites and other racial cohorts. Additionally, the non-Hispanic Black patients were noted to have lower distant relapse-free survival compared to non-Hispanic Whites and other races. Adjusting for recurrence score, treatment arm, menopausal status, age, and grade in a multivariable analysis did not alter the impact of race, suggesting that race is independently prognostic in this cohort of patients. In terms of treatment effect, there was no significant interaction between race and treatment arm in either postmenopausal or premenopausal cohorts. However, I would like to note that there were um, very small number of events in the non-Hispanic Black cohort. Therefore, it was a limited analysis and definitive conclusions about racial differences in treatment benefit cannot be made at this time. One of the most common questions asked by several of our colleagues was whether endocrine therapy compliance was a factor contributing to inferior outcomes noted in the Black population. Our analysis showed that in terms of treatment compliance, non-Hispanic Blacks were more likely to accept their treatment assignment compared to non-Hispanic Whites um, at the time of randomization, and were just as likely to remain on endocrine therapy at that six and 12 month interval after randomization, suggesting that the outcome differences are less likely attributable to lack of treatment compliance within that first year. However, data beyond the first year um, is still immature. Therefore, I think we need further analysis and longer follow-up to confirm this finding. Another common question um, was whether the outcome differences noted were related to breast cancer events and not some other comorbidities, since invasive disease-free survival as an outcome includes non-breast cancer-related events. And based on our invasive disease-free survival event analysis, the majority of the events in the non-Hispanic Black cohort were related to breast cancer recurrence, whether local, um, local regional, or distance. Um, therefore, the hazard ratio did not to be, seem to be driven by non-breast cancer-related events. At this time, there is no compelling evidence to suggest that race has an effect on treatment benefit. Therefore, the overall results of responder, which showed that postmenopausal women with positive nodes and a recurrence score of 25 or less may safely avoid chemotherapy, as of now, should be considered true for all races and ethnicities. Prospective clinical trials with built-in racial cohorts are needed to answer such questions definitively in the future. Next steps um, for us will include investigating possible underlying causes for the disparities we noted in Responder. We will be looking at biological factors, including differences in tumor biology, particularly the proliferation gene group differences by race. We will also be looking at non-biological factors, including social determinants of health based on geographic location to determine whether these were contributing to the disparities noted as well. We also plan to assess uh, the likelihood of treatment completion and adherence by race and ethnicity beyond that 
uh, first year. Our study results similar to prior studies indicate racial disparities in breast cancer, particularly in the hormone positive uh, breast cancer subtype. This highlights uh, that clinicians need to put more effort into ways to improve outcomes for Black women with breast cancer, starting with greater representation of racial and ethnic minorities in our clinical trials and research studies to help further understand cancer disparities and ultimately improve outcomes for minority women with breast cancer. I would like to emphasize the importance of diversity and inclusion in clinical trials. Underrepresentation of certain groups in a study can make the results less applicable to groups who may benefit from the findings the most. And one way we, can, we as clinicians can improve inclusion in our trials is to carefully consider the eligibility criteria for enrollment on trials um, to avoid discriminating against certain populations. Other ways we can ensure diversity is to increase our cultural awareness and involve our patient advocates in the design of the trials, which will help um, recruit and retain minority women with breast cancer in our trials. Like, share, and subscribe here on OncologyTube to get notifications when similar videos are available.